for me. I know, yes I do. You never, long as I know. Amen. Thank you for tuning in and fellowshipping here with us at Lincoln Park Holiness Church. True by time for our NFI radio broadcast and our YouTube broadcast. Here at Lincoln Park, we believe in God power preaching, sound doctrine teaching, compassionate reaching, and a hallelujah praise. So we thank you for worshiping us with this morning, and our hope and our prayer is something said and done to encourage you along your way. And without further ado, we would like to bring forth the right Reverend Our, our good minister, Mr. Anthony Evans, to come and lead us in prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Eternal God, our Father, it's once again that we come before your throne of grace. Yes. To thank you, Father, for another day that you've allowed us to see. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't allow the bed that we slept in to become our cooling pool. But you allowed us to arise this morning and we realized that it wasn't the alarm clock, but it was your gentle finger of love that allowed us to wake up this morning, filled with all the possibilities of a new day. Thank you, Father, for forgiveness of sin. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you. We pray now, Father, that you bless our pastor. Father, bless the father of this house, the one that you have called to give us your word. We pray now, Father, that you lower him down into your storehouse of knowledge. Fill him with your unadulterated gospel, that he might follow the great commission and feed your sheep. We pray, Father, that you bless his family. Then, Father, bless the Lincoln Park family and all his disciples. And, Father, we pray right now that you also bless your family, your children everywhere. Bless those who are sick and shut in. Bless those who are behind prison bars. Then bless those who are homeless, Father, and those who don't have enough food to eat. Then we pray, Father, that you bless those who are leaders uh, all over this country and the world. Bless from the smallest of municipalities to even the state houses and then those who are in control of the nation house, Father. We pray right now that you'd heal the land and heal it from this coronavirus that's affecting our country. Then we pray, Father, right now that you touch our hearts and our minds and prepare us for the word that has been prepared for us on this day. Let us not only be hearers of the word, but yet doers of the word, that we might make our land a better place to live for yet you and me. Now, Father, we pray that you'll come and sup with us, if only for yet a little while. We pray now, Father, that you'll have your way in this place and even over the airways. For it's in Jesus' mighty name that we do pray and give praise and let the redeemed of the Lord say amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen, amen. And without further ado, it is my privilege and the honor to bring forth to you our overseeing pastor, the hardest working man in the gospel, our very own Pastor William Eli Ratcliffe. Thank you, Elder Hollow, for that introduction. And thank you, Minister Evans, for that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful prayer. Man needs to always pray and not faint. And he also needs to not only just pray, but give God some praise. Let everything that have breath do what? Praise ye the Lord. And we will bless the Lord when? At all times. And his praises shall continually be well. In my mouth. Come on with your own mouth and in your own way. Give God some praise. Rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. He is worthy to be praised. Let's have a praise break. Glory to God. It's so good. So good. My Lord, my Lord. Thank you, thank you. God loves it when he is happy, happy the praises of his people. We are his children. We are his sheep, his people, and the sheep of his pasture. We just thank God for that joyful noise that you have made unto 
the Lord on this day. He woke us up. He didn't have to do it, but he did. We would like to talk to you in this following the series that we have been speaking from, The Big Lie, The Big Lie. Uh, we talked about the big lie, the influence. We talked about the big lie, the danger. We talked about the big lie, the consequences. And this message here, we're going to talk about the conclusion of Satan and his constituency. Oh, yes, Satan has an end. And this is what we're going to bring in this part of the series. The conclusion of Satan and his constituency. As strange as it may seem, a favorite bedtime story that I used to read to my son when he was about five or six years old. It came out of the book of Revelations. It came out of chapter 20. I enjoyed reading it and he enjoyed listening. And I know some, I know some adults, uh, Revelation, oh, they get scared of preachers talk about Revelation. Some people scared to read in the book of, of Revelation, but it's God's Bible, his holy word. So uh, but that's what I said, as strange as it may seem. Uh, that was one of uh, my favorite bedtime stories that I would read to him at that early age. My main purpose was for him to recognize that the Bible emphatically lets us know near the conclusion of its 66 books, that one day the devil will ultimately be defeated. Can I get a witness? Amen. I knew that the devil would come after him just like he did me. The Bible lets us know that Satan came after Peter and he came after the disciples. And please, for one moment, don't think that he's going to, for some reason, skip over you and your children. The Bible lets us know in Luke chapter 22 and 31 that the devil wanted to crush Peter. I'm going to ask evangelist Mary Branch to come and read that scripture for us and confirm it from God's word. Praise God. Coming from St. Luke 22 and 31. And it reads as, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Thank you, Evangelist Branch. The devil wanted to crush Peter like a grain of wheat because he only wanted to find the bad in him. And although Peter faltered and denied Christ, Jesus prayed that his faith would not completely diminish and he would not ultimately be destroyed. Actually, his faith was renewed, and later in life, Peter became a powerful leader. Am I right about it? Mm -hmm. My main purpose for you in this sermon is to let you also know that Satan, or whatever you want to call him, he himself has an end. He has an end of time coming, and he is a defeated foe. Yes, yes. John says in a vision that he had in Revelations 20 and 1 through 10, 
is what my bedtime story was for a while. And I'm going to ask Mother Belinda McCoy to come and read that scripture that I used as a bedtime story for my son when he was five or six years old. Come on, Mother McCoy, and read for us Revelations 20, 1 through 10. Revelations 20, 1 through 10. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. Mm -hmm. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was, was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word which had not whispered the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon the forehead or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Jesus a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part. The first resurrection on such the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, God and Magog, to gather them together, the name of whom is as the sea of the sea as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and come past the camp of the saints about and loved city. The fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. For the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mother McCoy, for that reading of that scripture. And I advise you, those of you that are listening and watching to go to Revelation 20 and read that chapter. And don't just stop there. Or read the whole uh, chapter all the way to the 15th verse. See, John said in that vision that he saw an angel come down from heaven with the keys of the bottomless pit and a heavy chain was in his hand. He sees the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, Satan, and bound him in chains for a thousand years. Year. Note there the four names that he called him. Remember how I told you that the devil has more names in the Bible than anyone other than Jesus? Nevertheless, the dragon mission here is not the one that can be watched in the hobbit's unexpected journey. It's not the one that you might see in a Harry Potter uh, movie, the half blooded prince. It's not uh, a dragon that you might see or, or view in a Lord of the Rings movie. The dragon cited in these verses of scripture is the most notorious spiritual enemy of all mankind. And he's real. And he is also the one that I believe told that first big lie. <laughs> How about you? Do I have any that believe that? 
Say amen. amen. But amazingly, as Satan's end comes near, John says he saw a special angel throw him in to that bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked up Satan so he could not deceive the nations anymore until a thousand years thousand year period would be finished before he could be loose again. This period is referred to as the millennium, which comes from the Latin word meaning 1,000. There are many positions about the meaning of these thousand years, but for the sake of argument, all of the different outlooks acknowledge what is most crucial to our belief in Christianity, and that is that Christ will one day return, defeat Satan, and reign forever. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. God shared the defeat of Satan, beginning in verse Revelation 27 through 10, as we heard. And when he said, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan will be loosed out of the prison and will eventually be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone for the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever, which is the place of an after death punishment of the wicked. Now, and I know some will say that's horrible. Why would a loving God do something like that? Uh -huh. Well, if you have repented of your sins, <laughs> that's one thing that you don't even have to worry about <laughs> because you will never have to find out. Can I get a witness? Yeah. These future sayings reveal that Satan's power is not eternal. And in time, he will meet his doom. Furthermore, all his evil work done to mankind from the beginning of Genesis 3, 1 through 6 and continues today will be destroyed. And he will never be a threat to anyone again, Satan is a defeated foe. And here we see as John's vision lets us know that Satan will be defeated. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. In the name of Jesus and the blood of Christ, it is so. But thanks be to God, we that believe we are not defeated. We may be hard pressed on all sides, but not crushed. Can I get a witness? We will have troubles all around us, but not defeated. Can I get a witness? Paul says, even when we don't know what to do, we do not give up. Paul says that. It is by the excellence of the power of God and not of us that we are persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We may not have a problem telling the big lie, but we do have a big problem, and that problem is the problem of sin. Can I get a witness? Because the Bible said that we are all sinners. And if we say we have no sin, then we tell a lie. And the truth is not in us. Moreover, God says a liar shall not tarry in his sight. Now that's another big problem for us. There's the white lie. There's the error. There's the mistake. How about when we say, I'm almost there. I'm five minutes away. 
or I'm just around oh. the block. <laughs> or sometimes you know you are not almost there. It's going to be at least a half an hour before you get where you're Amen. going. <laughs> we have all fudged the truth one way or another. I made a blunder or a guess. Huh? And how about this month? How about April Fool's Day? If a person didn't tell a lie, that wouldn't be an April Fool's Day. And I know some of you told some, just like me, fifth we was in school. <laughs> yeah. But what we really should be concerned about is not April Fool's Day, but Judgment Day. Can I get a witness? Although the enemy will bring lies, attacks, and offenses will come, it's competent to know that Jesus came to our rescue. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. Satan has an end, and there will be a conclusion. Solomon, the wisest man to ever live, learned through life experience that the conclusion of the whole matter of life is to fear God and keep his commandments. Go in Ecclesiastes and find it. I'm not even going to tell you where that you go and stood and search your Bible. But that's what Solomon said. Grace is our supporter. Mercy is our backer. Faith is our promoter. Prayer is our activist. And Jesus is our advocate. Amen. Grace is our supporter. Mercy is our backer. Faith is our promoter. Prayer is our activist. And Jesus is our advocate. John First John 1 and 9 says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, my son will be 35 this year, and we both can say that although our adversaries have tried to shift us as we during our righteous years, we can say it greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And if anybody here that can say that, repeat that, you need to speak that. You need to make that known. Cause demons to tremble. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. My son, he has a testimony. And I have mine. And I'm sure you have yours too. Can I get a witness? So we need to give God some glory. We need to really have another praise break. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. He that had begun a good work in me, a good work in you, he will perform it unto the day of the Lord. Satan's day is coming. But I'm so glad that Christ is coming too. I believe that, and I know in my heart that he is coming back just like he said he would. And I don't want to be one to see him when he come back. I want to be one to go back with him when he come. Ain't that what the old people used to say? Uh, ain't that what they used to say, Minister Evan? They just say, I want to go back with him. I want to go back with him. I want to go back with him. When he come, he coming on a cloud and every eye shall yeah. see him. I want to go back with him when he comes. Yeah. Until then, my Christian friend, don't let the devil ride. Because if you let him ride, he'll want to drive. Yeah. Let the come on, Dr. Solve and pray. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, 
as we see another day to Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for bring us together one more time to hear the anointed word, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, bless Lincoln Park, Lord Jesus, for the mission that is on towards the higher calling in you, Christ Jesus, as we bestow our you know, blessings that you have bestowed upon us, upon others, Lord, that you be that vessel, Lord, to pour out the anointing, Lord, of what you want us to do, Heavenly Father, for, for our hands, Lord, are there for you to use, Lord. And our minds are there, Lord, for you to take and let us know what we must think and do in the hours of need, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for seeing us through the George Floyd situation, Lord Jesus. And Lord, because we know your hand is on it right now. And Lord, let us have a mind to stay stayed on thee. And when as all the Christian brothers and sisters around the world, Heavenly Father, lift up their hands saying, thank you, Lord, for another day. Lord, we thank you for the word today, Lord Jesus, as we move on higher towards you. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray today. Amen. Amen. Lincoln Park Holiness Church is about loving people and helping community. Our main objective is winning souls. You are welcome to partner with us or help sponsor this ministry and broadcast with a donation. Please visit our website at lincolnparkchurch.com and click the Let's Give tab at the top of the screen. Feel free to leave comments. You can also download the Givelify app on your mobile phone and look for Lincoln Park Church. Cash app, cash tag, Lincoln Park CRF. We are located at 13 Heath Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. God bless you, and we look forward to you joining us next week on NFI Radio and Catch the Wave from the number one radio station reaching the world with gospel music and preaching.